Welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic is importing a tool assembly from a CAD model. So one of the new functions of the new toolkit is the ability to generate a tool or a tool assembly from an actual CAD model. So we've seen previously in other videos on this YouTube channel where you can individually define the insert, the shank with coordinate systems and such, and then you can import those components to be built, to use them to build a tool assembly later on in the tool assemblies library. Uh, one of the functions we'll show in this video here is if I just open up a quick library, so new tool library, and we'll go right to the tool assemblies because we are looking at a tool assembly on screen. Let's see if we can use that. Uh, so first thing I always recommend is let's just save this. So we'll just call this for the video. Okay, so normally what we would do is we would go to import from tool assemblies to a tool components and then build those assemblies from those components. I'm going to jump to this icon here, import tool assembly from CAD. This is going to take a look at the active SOLIDWORKS assembly we have in the background and pull the items from there and build those components for me. Um, and the way that works is basically click on it. It'll remind me that I need to have that, that assembly open in the background. So I'm just going to say yes, it's open in the background. And it'll have the address that I'm looking at because it's already over in the background. And it's going to ask me, am I making a milling tool or a turning tool? In this case, this is a turning tool. So I'm going to click on generate as turning tool. And with the active model in the background, it's going to take a look at the individual components, uh, build them as individual components, and then put them in the same assembly we see on screen. So you can see that it brought it in. Now, one of the things you'll notice is it thinks that the screw is the cutter. But everything else is assembled correctly. If we look at our little preview, it is all assembled correctly. So to correct the assembly from the background there, uh, the screw is not a screw. We'll just tell that to change it to a shank. Uh, and the actual insert, I'll just tell it to change it to a cutter, and I'll tell it that it's a profile cutter or a profile insert. And you can see now that the icon changes to show that it's an insert and the color changes to show that it's an insert. Um, now I could leave them in this order, but obviously that is not correct. So I'll just grab this and move it to the end of the, the list there. Now, if you're familiar with this workflow, it looks like that the screw and the insert are both being held by uh, the clamp. Um, now in this case, it's not technically correct, but in the use of this actual tool, it won't really matter. We're really just looking to make sure that this is defined as a cutter, and then these items here are defined as adapters or holders or shanks. Um, so this was imported from the original SOLIDWORKS assembly we have in the background, which means it's also under those coordinate systems as well. So if the default coordinate system looks correct, you can use it. But because in this model, I've actually gone and prepared it, uh, as you've seen in previous video, I'm actually gonna use those coordinate systems myself. So for the insert, I'll change the reference coordinate system to my insert mount. And the reason I might wanna do this is again, because this being a turning insert, I might wanna make sure that my XZ plane, my cutting plane is on the top face of the part, which means my cutting point will be on the top edge of the part. Additionally, when we go to mount this in our machine, I, want, I might want to make sure my shank, or at least the one that's on the top here, that defines the mounting, to be using a proper coordinate system as well. So I'll go in there and change reference coordinate system to shank mounting, or in this case, the one that I labeled as shank mounting. And you can see now that it comes in with those coordinate systems. So once those are all corrected, I'll click OK. And it'll import this entire assembly into the tool assemblies menu that I created. And now it looks at it from this point of view. So now I can just take it from this, this temporary folder here. I'll just right click and say, send to storage. I'm currently inside of just a tool assemblies library that I'm defining. So really I only have storage to mount the two. But later when we go to use this tool assembly library in a part file, that's where I can tell it which station it's being held in. But it imported it with all those components in the proper hierarchy. And this one is now recognized as a turning insert. And if I take a look at that, all my XZ planes look to be correct. I'll be able to use this in my, my turning tool. And the cutting point is also on the tip there. Now there was some fixing we had to do there to get this to work. But what if this was actually corrected? So we saw that when we first imported it, uh, it thought that the insert being second on the list was just a shank and then the screw at the bottom of the list 
was actually the insert. So we can use that to our advantage. Let me just exit out of here. And in this workflow, if there's nothing in this uh, SolidWorks assembly that means that, that dictates that this guy has to be in this order, then why don't I just take this guy down to the bottom here? So if it's at the bottom of the assembly list, now that will be recognized as the cutter. So let's go back into Toolkit, Edit Tool Assemblies. We'll go and edit that one I just created, which is the one for the video. And we'll do the same icon again. Again, it just reminds us that we should have that file open in the background, which we do. And I'll generate it once again. Same SOLIDWORKS assembly file, but this time I've put the insert model at the bottom of the list. This should now prompt the tool assemblies creation or the tool import from a tool assembly from CAD to recognize the hierarchy as again being the top is the shank, is the adapter, everything in the middle is some sort of a shank, and at the bottom is the insert. So that saves you having to change it to an insert of any type or what whatnot. Uh, the only thing left is again those same corrections. We can just give it a insert mount for that one. We can tell it that the adapter is mounted under my shank. So that should be good. Click OK. OK, and then same as before, I can right click and I'll just send it to storage. And it imports it directly from there. OK, so as soon as you have a SOLIDWORKS assembly, with all the components already listed, with the insert at the bottom, or in this case, overall, the cutter that you like to define or be recognized as a cutter at the bottom of the assembly. It should import here. Uh, you could put in your own coordinate systems here to fully lock in exactly how you like this to be defined. And then you can import right from a CAD assembly model into a tool assemblies model. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.